now since we are on FTCs I couldn't help it but uh, not to say some oh by the way uh, <laughs> I updated this outline too so let me drop it down the FTZ outline uh, and uh, so you folks uh, this is the latest uh, version of the outline yeah, but um, what I'd like to bring your attention to is uh, uh, what, what's going on, or, or the notion of the foreign trade zones themselves. And in this case, uh, what's what's extremely important is uh, is the status, right? Well, the status. The status, many of you know, is, is just generally important, right? I, what are you, um, are you? Are you? Are you? Let's say, are you a doctor, or you are an architect, or are you a construction worker? Uh, and uh, um, so, so this this is this is extremely important, right? And as far as society is concerned, so same thing uh, can be attributed to the zone, except it's more pragmatic, pragma, pragma, pragmatically oriented. So what what you need to know is uh, there are several. Uh, 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 status, statuses within a zone, and uh, more, uh, there is a uh, privilege, non-privilege, zone restricted, and domestic. Right. So domestic is uh, you bring it in for manipulation. Remember, I gave you that uh, example with the marker. Right. The zone restricted is for exportation. Let's say storage and exportation. Uh, non-privilege and privilege are defining creatures, uh, and they're defining creatures because they determine the amount of rate and duty that one will take upon entry of the merchandise into the uh, uh, customs territory of the United States. Of course, customs territory of the United States uh, are 50 states, District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. So very often one will ask, or customs examiners will ask, Let's say, is Virgin Islands part of the customs territory of the United States? The answer is no, it's not. Um, it uh, has its own uh, little weird history uh, dating back to uh, the age of exploration. So, uh, so uh, going back to, uh, to privilege versus non-privilege, and why why the FTZs are, play such a big role in the world of customs and our uh, world of international trade? Well, imagine a foreign trade zone. Foreign trade zone, of course, it's a legal fiction, but uh, it is done in such a way where we kind of like pretend that we do have the zone. Uh, it's located within the geographical boundaries of the United States, but it is fictitiously outside of the United States. And it is, uh, it is fictitiously outside of the United States, so whatever is done out there uh, does, does has very little to do when yeah, uh, it's entered in, within the United States. Not very little, it has a lot to do actually, but very little to do from the point of view that uh, customs laws apply in a fictitious way in of FTZs. What that fictitious way is depends again on the status. So let's, uh, let me uh, take, a, like, take a quick dive into the uh, concept of privilege versus non-privilege, uh, since we have the opportunity to uh, to go to the FTZ. So, if we go to, let me see, page 27, we do kind of like have an answer of why FTZs play such an important role. So, here, Let me see. All right, here. Uh, so, what 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 you'll see here is a uh, uh, you'll see a uh, provision which relates to the privilege foreign status. And here is a punchline: classification of merchandise. Okay, number one, P privilege foreign merchandise. Pro uh, uh, yeah, provide pro provide will be subject to tariff classification at the rate of duty and tax in force of the date of filing of application for privileged status. 
right? Uh, so the moment is granted, that's the duty rate you pay. So let's say you are involved in some kind of operation, let's say manufacturing operation or some chemical operation. And uh, uh, in, in manufacturing operation, let's say you are bringing uh, materials uh, which uh, which have a duty rate of temper uh, which have a duty rate of five uh, percent or ten percent. Let's say ten percent. Um, then within the within the foreign trade zone, you put those materials together to the product final product which has duty rate of twenty percent. But because you brought it in and you got that merchandise privilege foreign status, upon the entry, it, the merchandise is the subject to, to, tariff, uh, to, to the tariff rate of 10%, not 20%. So it's really the rational... Uh, and and the, the non-privileged foreign status is, of course, the opposite, right? Uh, all opposite of that. So... So, so the the key the key thing, for example, uh, for for many manufacturers is the money saving operation, but the duty rate is just one example. Because uh, you have, if you have operations which, uh, let's say, have some kind of uh, merchant uh, restrictions because of anti-dumping or restrictions because of. Um, um, uh, country of origin provisions. What happens then? So uh, I'd like to bring your attention, and this is a customs ruling, which uh, I, I find uh, very, very useful in this particular case, uh, which discusses the country of origin marking. And it talks about the uh, well, it talks about other stuff, but I think it gives a good example. Uh, so you have you have uh, something which is brought withdrawn and brought into customs territory from the foreign trade zone, and it has been transformed from little pieces of uh, textiles into the finished product, which is terry towels, and it has been transformed. So the question is, what's the country of origin? Is the country of origin for the product which whether uh, uh, where, where the textile products which comprise those territories came from, or is the country of origin the United States? So here, customs determined that the country of origin of marking requirement were not applicable to the finished towels because the processing constitutes substantial transformation, so it's made in the United States. So much for the legal fiction, right? And because it, uh, it, it went through the substantial transformation, at the time of withdrawal of those terry towels, they are considered to be product of the United States, and no foreign country origin marking requirement is applicable. So, of course, that, that's that's for marking requirement, but it goes a long way for other stuff. Uh, for example, um, IKEA. Uh, I do not know how many of you are familiar with this uh, Swedish, I believe Swedish store. Uh, they um, are very persistent in taking advantage of the foreign trade zone regulations, uh, so they can uh, t they can take advantage of whatever restrictions uh, would be uh, in, in, in the case, for example, of stuff coming out of China. And of course, uh, some, well, well, we'll get to that later, but uh, a lot of products in China, I mean, now that post-Trump era, right, we know that there was like a U.S.-China trade war, uh, generally labeled, but uh, of course, it, it, it goes deeper to that because uh, there are a lot of anti-dumping duty provisions, and in the case of furniture, for example, uh, things uh, that are made that come from China, the furniture items, which are 
let's say, uh, uh, bedroom furniture that are made out of wood, the duty rate, uh, anti-damping duty rate can be as high as 200%. So, so that's a big deal. Uh, otherwise, the rate of furniture is duty free. So what can you do to make sure that uh, you comply with the law and at the same time do not pay those duties? So F FTZs, st stuff such as FTZ can partially provide the answer. But th there are many other things involved.